So I just put out a video literally last week about how overwhelmed I was, how much I had to do this semester, everything like that. And then in a true Katie fashion, I went and read 24 books, ignored everything in my life, fell behind in all of my classes, ran out of food, and have dug myself into a very, very, very deep hole that I will be climbing out of for the next three months. So yeah. Hello everyone, and welcome to my escape. If you're new here, my name's Katie, and I am a pro procrastinator who escapes all of my problems by reading books and then talking about them here, right now, with you. So thank you for contributing to my problem. Let's get into everything I read in 2024. So previously, the height of my reading was October 2022 when I read 25 books. This month, I read 24, but I read over a thousand pages more than in that month. So this is now officially my largest reading month. And considering I only set one goal for myself, which was read less than last year, I am off to a terrible, terrible start. So I read five YA fantasies, I read five fantasy romances, I read four alien slash monster romances, bear with me on that one, okay there were actually some good ones this month, three omega verses because honestly I am who I am and I'm not gonna apologize for it, <laughs> only one dark romance and then five contemporary romances. And I filmed four of them from home because I was really excited that the first four books I read in 2024 were all physical books off my shelves and I always want to read my physical books and I never do. So I filmed that one at home to be like, look, I can physically hold these up and show you that I do read physical books. So we're gonna hop into that and then the rest of the video is gonna be filmed from this location and I will separate it by subcategory. So my first read of 2024 was A Heart So Fierce and Broken. It is the second in the series and the first one is called A Curse So Dark and Lonely. The first one was like a Beauty and the Beast retelling but like heavy political intrigue, YA fantasy, uh, definitely some romance in there. This one I almost want to call it a Cinderella retelling but I could be making that up in my head. We follow slightly different characters, same world, definitely building on the last book so they're not standalones but like heavy political intrigue, world jumping, a little bit of magic, there's a curse of course. You follow one kind of main character from the first book and then you're introduced to a new character and you kind of follow their journey. But then like now you're questioning the actions of the characters from the first book and I just love it. But I'm really, really enjoying this series. I can't wait to get into the third one. This was one of my most anticipated reads of the year and I knocked it off first. And it's a physical book, so you know what? So far on the goals, we're not doing too bad. Then I picked up Supernova. This is the third in the Renegades trilogy. I wanted to have this done in 2023, but with my December like goal that I set for myself, there just wasn't time for it. So I read it first thing in January and I loved it. It definitely lived up to the rest of the series. All of the books in the series are five stars for me and I would literally recommend the series to absolutely anybody. I am obsessed with it. So it's a YA sci-fi fantasy somewhere in there, villains versus superheroes. So we follow our main girl, she's the daughter of the villains, but she goes undercover and like infiltrates like superhero headquarters and joins the team of the son of the major superheroes and then watching them interact and kind of like find their own views on the world and not necessarily exactly what their parents believe in and then watching them like talk to each other because you know it's the perspective of a villain and perspective of a hero but the two sides never talk because they're always at war so watching them like slowly try to like approach their opinions and like find themselves because it is YA so they are teenagers. I loved it. I loved it so much. Again I can't really get into this one because I'll spoil the other two but so good and one thing that I always complain about is epilogues in books. This epilogue blew my mind. Blew my mind away. One of the best epilogues I've probably ever read and that's not a long list because I hate epilogues but this one was so good I was not expecting it. I need so much more from the story now. There's a potential that she might continue the world like in the future at some point. There's nothing concrete, but she did say this is a world she would like to come back to, the author. I need her to come back. I need her to come back because this is now one of the best series I've read of all time. Everyone should go read it. So this is the one I just read, but this is the first one. So pick up the series and live your absolute best lives. I cannot recommend any higher. Ah, I love it. I love it so much. And then I read Book Lovers because it was on my shelf and it's a physical book. So I read this twice last year in 2023. The first time I picked it up, it was an ebook. The second time I picked it up, it was an audiobook. And I knew that I got this in the summer and it had been sitting on my shelves while I was away at school. And I was like, mm, what if we read it though as a physical book? And I just had the experience of all of them. Whichever format you read, I love this book. Definitely a comfort read for me. So it's a contemporary romance and it's very, we're working against the tropes kind of thing. I think the classic Hallmark 
movie. You move to a small town, you know, there's a bakery going under, you fall in love with the baker's daughter, you save the business, and you know, your cold city ways go out the door. Well, our book follows basically the cold-hearted woman that gets dumped in the city while her boyfriend, you know, falls in love in this small town. So she's a book agent, her sister really wants to take a vacation, she'll do anything for her sister, they go to this small town and she hates everything about it. She's a city girl through and through and she loves that. And they're trying to live up like their best Hallmark experience but she doesn't want to, she's just here for her sister. And then she runs into kind of like her workplace rival, I guess not workplace because they don't work together but they work in the same field and they don't really like each other and they're both just kind of like trapped in this little hell that is this small town and they're both true city people. You kind of just watch them like come together and fall in love and it's freaking adorable. I love the main character in this. I love her growth. I love Emily Henry. I love this book. It is so just, oh, it just gives you all the warm fuzzy vibes and I love it. And these two are like truly meant to be together. Like a lot of the romance I read, they could really end up with anybody, honestly. Like it's not that like soulmate-esque. These two are soulmates. Like they need to be together. There's no one else in the world for them but each other. And I love this book. Everyone should go read it. And then the last one I read at home was People We Meet on Vacation. This is another contemporary romance, also by Emily Henry. I've read two other books by Emily Henry, Book Lovers and Beach Read. Both of them were five star reads for me. So I was so excited to get into this one. And yeah, it just, it let me down. This was like a 3.5 for me. <sighs> I don't know. I just didn't care about the characters. I don't really feel like they gelled or that they made any sense together. And that was a theme in the book is that they didn't make sense together, which is why they waited so long to get together. But at the same time, I still don't think that they belong together. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I just, you're not compatible to me on any, on any ground, any basic anything. But we follow these two people, it's a split timeline. So this girl and guy uh, became, became best friends in university. Every year they take a vacation together, except for the last two years, something happened two years ago and they haven't really talked since. And our main girl is like, I'm so done with this. I'm not happy with my life. The last time I was happy was when I was with him. We're gonna do this vacation again. So then they just kind of hop into it. So you're following the current vacation while every other chapter you're jumping between like the vacation 10 years ago, nine years ago, eight years ago. And you're like counting down to lead up to what happened two years ago. Honestly, I didn't care what happened two years ago because I didn't care about the characters and I didn't want them together. So whatever happened two years ago to split them up, I was sad their friendship ended for sure, but I didn't, I wasn't like, oh, we have to resolve this for your love story. Like, no, like, no, move on, bro, move on. They're also like, technically there's no cheating in this, but like, they're just cheating in this. <laughs> I would consider it cheating. And I don't love that. And it is addressed and like both characters kind of know that they were wrong. It's like emotional cheating, you know? But still, it just didn't do it for me. It didn't hit like the other Emily Henry books. And it was, it was kind of really disappointing. Okay, and now we're back here. <laughs> so we're gonna start with the YA fantasies. So again, two of them were already covered, but then the third one I read this month was Soul of the Sword. I was so excited to get into this one. I haven't released the video yet, but it is on my most anticipated reads of 2024. It is the second book in the Shadow of the Fox series. If you watched any of my videos, you've probably heard me talk about it because I got obsessed with the first one in December. Picked up the second one in January. It didn't necessarily hit as hard as the second one, but it's still a really interesting story and a really interesting world. And I am very excited to get into the third one as well. I can't actually get into it at all without giving away the first one. So the world is like Japanese mythology. You got a kitsune that goes on basically a bunch of side quests with this like assassin dude. Um, but it is YA, so they're all like 15, 16. You have like all these characters joining per side quest and basically they're going to go attack the big bad or to stop the big bad from happening. That's the first book. The second book is a little more character dark, I guess. The characters face like bigger concerns and bigger qualms and you're really seeing like characters come together and relationships form rather than like the little side quests occurring. So it wasn't as side questy, which was something I really liked from the first one, but I understand why, you know, it had to get really into the plot into the second one. But yeah, I really liked it. I gave it four stars, very excited to get into the rest of the series and it was great. The next book is actually a physical I can hold up and it's Etiquette and Espionage. This is not necessarily YA fantasy, but I didn't know where else to put it in this video. This is like middle school historical fantasy. Esque, okay 
So it's set in like the 1800s, except there's vampires and there's werewolves and you know all these magical creatures and it's like integrated into society, but society is also very like steampunky. So like they have butlers, but the butlers are robots kind of thing. That's the vibe. And this girl is like 14 and she's wild, you know, she like climbs things and has dirt on her dress and all this. So her mom sends her to this finishing school, except it's like a finishing school for assassins. And we love. <laughs> We love that premise. We love that basis. It was really just like a breath of fresh air after a lot of like romances I've read because I put this on my story, but I will never forget it. She was like in this carriage and she like looks to this guy and because my mind was so like in tune with romances, I was like, oh, like this is the love interest, like blah, blah, blah. And she's like, oh, I mean, it's so unfortunate that all boys smell a bit like goat. I was like, oh, so I'm not the love interest. But literally facts, facts. Many, most boys do smell a little bit like goat. Like I, I get that. So I absolutely loved it. Breath of Fresh Air, again, it is aged for like middle school. So some things are a little over the top, like a lot of the names and stuff like that. But it was really, really fun. A spinoff of another series that's aged for adults. So I'm considering like checking out that series as well. But I really love this and I would pick up the next one. Like not something I would rush into, but absolutely had so much fun with it. I gave it four stars and I would recommend if the premise is something that you'd be interested in and you're looking for like a really light read, pick it up. And then the last YA fantasy I read was Vampire Academy. I do own this one back home, but can't hold it up. So overall with January, just to like preface kind of like the whole video, I was just very overwhelmed and very like upset. And I don't love the direction my program is going and I have some issues with it, but we're not gonna get into that. Ultimately, I was just very demotivated and very like, upset all of the time and I use books to escape that's where the 24 book thing is coming in so I did a couple rereads and the rereads just hit every single time if you're not a person that rereads books start start it brings so much peace to your mind I just I love it but anyways that's why I picked up Vampire Academy literally no other reason I wanted something I knew I was gonna like something that wasn't too deep Rose Hathaway is one of like my forever comfort characters so picked it up read it it was still amazing gave it four stars like I did back when I read it in like high school but I guess I should tell you what Vampire Academy is about if you haven't read it or watched the movie or watched the new tv show I haven't seen the new tv show but Vampire Academy is an academy for vampires so they're all like high school aged and you really follow Rose Hathaway and her best friend Lissa. Lissa's like a vampire. They don't call them that, but Lissa's a vampire and Rose is like a vampire guardian. And they go to the same school, but when the book opens, they're both running away from the school and then the school finds them and traps them and brings them back. And then you figure out like, why did they run in the first place? And a bunch of weird stuff is going on. So you're like, uh, what it like, why are people hunting you? And like all of, and why would you run from the school that's supposed to protect you? And all of this sort of stuff. Um, I just really love it because I love Rose Hathaway. She's like so badass. She's amazing. She's the highlight of my life. She's funny. She doesn't take anything from anyone. Like, it's just great. It's just great. I will say though, there's like a sub subplot of like a student teacher romance going on, which just icked me at the time and icks me now. Student teacher is really not my thing. But if you like student teacher, you will love, love this book. Just saying. But yeah, very angsty, very you know, vampire high school-esque, you know, all of that. All of that is definitely in there. You got high school drama, you got bullies, you got cliques, you know, everything like that is happening. So have a blast with it. And that bridges us really well into fantasy romance. So the first of the five fantasy romances I'm going to talk about is Fourth Wing. This was another reread for me. Again, slapped, really scratched that itch in my brain of like truly just being able to like let go. And I'm not trying to like guess plot lines or follow stories or follow characters like I know what's gonna happen I'm just immersing myself in that story again but fourth wing is a five-star read for me it's another academy but it's more like it's a war college so they're not in high school they're more like college aged but it's not like university in any sense of the word once you hit 20 you have to enroll in either a scribe a healer um in like the infantry military type thing or be a dragon rider and dragon riders basically it's like 50 percent of them die before they ever ride a dragon or something like that or before they ever graduate school and we open on our main girl and she's like i have raised my whole life to be a scribe my whole life six months ago my mom told me i have to go and be a rider and the riders are going to kill me because everyone dies anyways and she has some sort of physical chronic 
d disease type of things like her joints pop out really um, easily and she breaks bones and bruises really easily so she's like this is not the place for me but she's like either I do this or my mom kills me so then then we go and she's like oh god and we find out that not only <laughs> Does she have to survive this war college? She also has like an immediate enemy based off of something her mother did. As soon as she steps on those gates, this person's like, I would like you dead. And so would all of my friends. And she's like, this is great. This is wild. This is a great time. And then you just watch her try to survive. It is honestly so fun. Like it is so fun. The story's really good. The world building was like decent, but the dialogue, the banter, I love Violet. Like. I I love the dragons, like any book with dragons, but especially like the dragons in these ones, had an absolute blast with. Highly, highly recommend the story. Again, it's a five star for me, so go and enjoy it and love it. And also part of the initial reread for me was because I wanted to get into my next one, which was Iron Flame. This is the second one to Fourth Wing. I did get it like the week it was released and then I waited like three months to read it. But then I wanted to not forget anything from Fourth Wing, so that was the initial reread of Fourth Wing. Then I went into Iron Flame. Again, can't get much into this one without giving away the first one. This one, I will say though, had a lot more world building aspect that kind of brought in. So the first one I felt was really more like a fantasy romance and it did like establish, you know, the characters and the dynamics and like the romantic relationship. This one to me established more of the world and the politicking and I loved that. I could have done without the romance in this one, honestly. Like by the time you're this deep into it, I'm like, I actually don't care about your relationship because there are so many other more important things going on than your angst. I'm sorry. So this one was a four star for me. With that said, my best friend wants to beat me for saying that because the, the romance, she's like, no, it's the best thing. And it just gets even better in this one. So it's really like to your taste, whether you're in it for the romance or not. I loved it. I had a great time with it. Again, like fourth wing in these, this one I have to talk about together, but I would highly recommend, highly, highly recommend. And don't look it up online because you will be spoiled. You will be spoiled. There's so many spoilers out there. And like people like started releasing Iron Flame spoilers like a month after you like it was released, which is way too early for me. Like if you're gonna spoil something like A Court of Thorns and Roses, like, okay, that's been around for a very long time, but like a month. So just don't look it up, take my word for it. Start with Fourth Wing and then come into Iron Flame. So then I read another fantasy romance that's also really blown up on the book platforms and it is Divine Rivals. Oh my God, did I sleep on this one. Guys, this is so good. And people have been telling me that for months, for literal months, and I've been like, no have had zero interest in it, okay? I'm saying this to preface because when I describe it to you, you're probably gonna say no. <laughs> or maybe it's really your thing, but like, you're probably gonna be like, mm, nah, no, okay? Just don't worry about the description, just go and read it. So Divine Rivals is like historical romance fantasy type thing. So you're in a world and it's very like World War I Europe-esque and there's like gods and like hellhound type things and stuff like that. And this is like normal, it's not new, but two gods are warring and they're using the people to fight their war for them. So there's like a war effort going on. That's why I say World War One. But we primarily follow these two characters. They're both employed at the same newspaper, but they're competing for like one permanent position. And one of them finally says, you know what? there's more important things going on and this isn't like where I'm gonna spend my energy. I'm gonna go to the war front and I'm gonna be a war correspondent. But the romance comes in, there's a way that these two characters can talk to each other. One knows who the other is, the other one doesn't, but they essentially fall in love through these like letters while one is away at war and one's not. And you see the dynamics of like being on the war front and everything happening there, but then the dynamics of like home and society and then background of like what started the war and like how are they able to talk to each other and where is this magic coming from? Because there's magic in the world and it's not necessarily like a weird thing to have, but it is like very sporadic. And this is why I say don't listen to my description because the description sucks. That's literally the best I can do to make it sound interesting. And to me, as soon as you say World War One vibes, I'm out. I don't do the historical fiction. I have one friend, that's all she reads is World War Two historical fiction. No, 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 no. So I had no interest in picking this book up, but my friend like begged me to, begged me to. She said it was the best book she read in 2023. So I was like, fine. And I will. But if I don't like it, I'm gonna put it down. Oh my god, did I like it. It is such a vibe for one. Like the story's good, the writing is excellent, the characters are great, the romance is there, but even just the vibe of the story, like it was I was like I was like floating in this like in-between space the whole book. Okay, it was so good. Five stars for sure. I don't know if I said that, but please go read it and don't let like the description 
wreck it. <laughs> because I promise you it's better than it sounds. We have 24 to get through this month. We need to be moving faster. Okay. Then I reread Restless Slumber. I still love this cover and I'm gonna hold it up yet again because I still think it's the most beautiful cover I own. Don't tell my mind book series that, but like I am obsessed with it. I reread this one because I really wanna read the rest of the series and I own the next two up there. Again, I wanted to come in like fresh off of what had recently happened. So I reread this one. I did pick this one up on audio on my library just to get through it like a little bit faster. I will say I really enjoyed reading this one. The audio I didn't love though. So if you do wanna check this out, I do recommend like actually reading this one. The audio just, I don't know why, but it left a lot to be desired. But still love this one, four stars. Most gorgeous cover I have ever seen. And yeah, this is the second in the series. So the first in the series is Fortuna Sworn. And overall, you follow our main girl, Fortuna, and it's kind of like an ermine fantasy. So you have like the current world, but then you also have like the Fey world and kind of jump back and forth between the two. So she's this creature and there's not many of them left. And her brother's been kidnapped for a couple of years. And this fairy comes to her and she's he's like, hey, if you marry me and serve my interest, like, politically, then I will tell you where your brother is. And she's like, I would literally do anything for my brother. This sounds like a terrible idea, but sure, let's go. So then she gets pulled into this world of like things and politics and like all of these like cruel people and stuff like that. And at the same time, she's trying to save her brother. And then it kind of just like evolves further and further from there. The first one wasn't great. The second one was so good. Okay, the first one like barely got a three star for me. And this one is like a four star and I love it. So very excited to get into the rest of the series and I do want to pick those up in 2024. It's just one of those things where like when I'm that excited for a book, I won't read it. And then the last fantasy romance I read was really more of like a monster romance, but we're gonna put it under fantasy romance. Okay, it was Radiance. She wrote Entreat Me, which I read last year and I really, really loved and it was an author I wanted to see more of, but she's not on KU and she wasn't on my old library or anything like that. And I got the new library card. There was a bunch of her work, so I put holds on pretty much all of them. This was the first one that popped up. This is very much like historical medieval vibes and our two main characters are from two separate kingdoms, but also two separate species, which is where I think the monster part comes in and they have like an arranged marriage because you know second in line for the throne and like niece of the king so they're not taking power over it's like basically like a political alliance but they're not gonna like rule the kingdom kind of thing it's just kind of cute it is the vibe of like it's more of like a mature relationship it's not a lot of angst it is a lot of like let's develop a friendship and like a respect before we develop more and I just really appreciate that with her writing I didn't like this one necessarily as much as Entreat Me I did really like like this aspect of they both find each other absolutely hideous, like absolutely repulsive. And they're able to overcome that because, you know, truly this like friendship develops. So it's the opposite of falling in lust because they really need to get over that kind of thing. So that was really cute to read about. It was just like a bit dull for me. And I didn't realize it was a series. This is the first book in a series, not a standalone series, like an actual series. And I don't think I care enough to continue the series. So again, three stars, but I do really like her writing and I would like to check out more of hers. And then getting into the monster monster romances. <laughs> so I read A Polar Expedition and I buddy read this one with April from Happily Ever April. She also has a YouTube channel, so go check her out. And then she's also on Instagram as well, which is initially how I found her. But she put out this video about like the, the book she had on her Kindle from Kindle Unlimited that she was like most excited to read or something like that. And if anybody wanted to do a buddy read and I was like, yeah, I want to buddy read with somebody. I don't do a lot of buddy reads. So this is the one we chose and it is a bear romance. It definitely gives like expedition vibes, but we open on our girl and she's part of this academia setting sort of thing. And she goes, you know, this is where my research has always lied and I want to research it further and I'm going to go on this expedition. And then the dean or the the head of the academia is like, no, like, we're not going to sponsor this. We don't condone this. Too many people have died. No, no, no. And she goes, okay, I just won't tell you and I'll go alone. So then she treks basically to the edge of the kingdom and goes off into the wilderness by herself. And this bear catches her scent and goes, I have been charged to like protect this forgotten like city and she can't get too close but she also smells really good so let me just follow her for a little bit and make sure she like goes a different direction so she's going about and she's like cataloging plants and animals and stuff like that and then she gets too close and he's like i have to act now so then she gets dragged into this like secret city to see what are we going to do with her because she knows too much 
It's very short. I think it's under 300 pages. It was interesting in the way it was written. It had footnotes. Footnotes immediately give me the ick because it reminds me of an academic paper. But considering this is like an academia setting, that really made sense and I thought it was like a cute little addition. I didn't like reading it, especially because on like my tablet it didn't work so well, but it depends on the tablet that you have. Some of them work better, some of them don't. I also thought the footnotes were weird because it was like a narrative of the author post story so she knows how the story goes so you kind of know how the story ends also because of the footnotes as well um not that you didn't know that this was a romance but like still you know i didn't love it i didn't hate it i gave it three stars it definitely had its moments but i still felt like it was a little shallow i think that was because of the length but there wasn't a lot of depth to the world like I would like there to be. The characters were cute though because they were both very much like I would like somebody and nobody has really stuck out to me but this is where I would like my life to go and then they find each other and they're like oh this is perfect because we both want the same things and I really appreciate when characters want the same things and their relationship actually makes sense. I can support that. Okay, the rest of the monster slash alien romances I read were all part of the Ice Planet Barbarian series. This is a series that I never thought I would own or hold, but knew I would eventually get to. This is like the book platforms version of introduce me to any kind of alien or monster romance. Everyone loves the series. It's been around on the platform, I feel like forever. And it's just, it's just a fun time. It's like, I just remember one time I saw somebody post about it and they were like, there are crack in these books. And I agree, I agree. I bought this because I saw somebody selling this, The Dare, okay? It's like a little novella. I, this is Harley LaRue. This is her Loser series. This is the prequel of that series. I am so freaking excited to own this. You have no idea. I finally have Harley LaRue on my shelf. I'm so excited. But anyways, it's very tiny. So I was like, okay, if I'm gonna go pick this up, which I know I'm going to do, I have to get other books because it's not worth the gas. I mean, it is for me emotionally, but like rationally, it wasn't worth the gas. So I was like, okay. I'm gonna get this one which I obviously am I have to get something else and then she had this one as well and I was like I know I'm gonna get there one day like I'm gonna be there one day and I'm gonna be like okay let's go so I was like might as well have it on my shelf for when I want it I picked it up like the next day it was just staring at me and then I was like I'm actually so curious like I'm so curious why so many people are obsessed <laughs> with these blue aliens so picked it up loved it I crushed like four of them in a day. Granted, they're all very, very short. Like, I would say almost like novella length, but they're just fun. And they do have crack in them, okay? Basically, Ice Planet Barbarians, the first one, you have all these girls on this spaceship and they've been abducted. The first, honestly, chapter is really dark and I was not happy about it. And this was not at all what I thought the series was about because everyone was like, oh, it's just cute and comfort and like, you know, vibes. And then the first chapter was really dark and messy stuff. And I, the first, uh, first couple chapters, I don't know. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I wasn't ready for it. So, ugh, on that. Anyways, they crash land on this planet and the girls are like, we have to live. But like a lot of us are injured because we crash landed and we have no food and it is an ice planet. So we're going to freeze to death. So they send the girl, our main girl, out to go find like civilization or food or something because she's the one in the best shape that might be able to make it. So they bundle her up in like the only like warm clothes they have and everything like that and they send her off she starts like traipsing through and she comes across this barbarian this alien this blue alien and they can't communicate they don't speak the same language they're not the same species but he has this like thing in his like culture and his species where he vibrates when he finds like the love of his life so he sees her and he starts vibrating and he's like this is so weird <laughs> like what is this pale tiny thing and am I resonating for her but he's like well you know it never lies so this is now my mate I must love her so he like takes her to this cave and gives her a blanket and like makes a fire and like gets food and she's like is he gonna kill me because I can't talk to him and I don't know why he keeps purring around me <laughs> but she's like I don't know what else to do so I'm just gonna sit here and see if he kills me <laughs> and he, yeah it's just great and then you watch them try to like figure each other out because they don't speak the same language so it's like a lot of like pointing and gesturing and trying to do all this other stuff and it's great and we love it and it's so much fun first one I literally gave four stars like I loved it 
Uh, the next ones, I think were all three stars for me because a big thing I loved about the first one was the language barrier, where in the next ones they don't have the language barrier. I guess in the fourth one they do like a little bit, but I really liked like that aspect <laughs> of it. So yeah, but very short, very spicy, very fun times. To me, they're just like cozy because I, again, wasn't mentally in a great spot. And I was like, yes, all I want to do right now is hide in a cave with a blanket. That's all that's all I want. So really for this one, loved. Loved it in the moment. Loved it. Loved it. Definitely something I would pick up again. I think I get to get a little repetitive, you know, for four in a row. I think it's really 22 in the series, but I highly recommend. <laughs> they do have crack in them, okay? I don't, I don't know what else to tell you. In terms of tropes, the first one is very much like insta-love. The second one is like enemies to lovers. The third one is he's like hesitant and thinks she can't be loved and he's like the playboy. So I guess it would be like good girl, bad boy. And the fourth one is very much that like barbarian-esque thing again and it's a um, captor captive type of thing. Okay, and then coming off of the aliens, I realized I was like, this was before the rereads happened. I was like, this is what I want. Like, I just want like blankets. Like I just blankets. Like I want a story about blankets and I don't care if it's a romantic partner, if it's a parent, if it's a friend. I want to read about someone bringing someone else a blanket and then them just burritoing in this blanket and staying there. <laughs> that is what I wanted. And I was like, what is going to give me that? And I was like, Omegaverse. Because Omegaverse has nesting where, you know, when they are approaching their heat or whatever, the Omega will create a nest of like belongings they like or stuff that like comforts them and then they just sit in it and I was like this is exactly what I need so then I went looking for Omega Versus and I don't have any on my TBR because they're not really my thing because I don't like a lot of the wording like slick <laughs> disgusting to pick a different word pick a different word please please for the love of god pick a different word but anyways I picked up online heat which was really short like under 100 pages workplace romance but during covid i'd never read a book like set during covid kind of thing everyone was working from home and she had like weekly meetings with her boss one-on-one -on -one to go over these numbers she was omega and he was an alpha and then he's like oh like it doesn't look like you're doing too well and she's like i'm about to go in my heat and i'm all alone and he's like growls or something like an alpha does i don't know and uh yeah and then it's a lot of like phones spicy times and videos spicy times with your boss over zoom couldn't i couldn't get into i couldn't get into it i really couldn't get into that also i just felt like yes it's short but all of the conflict that was built up happened like the resolution happened behind the scenes like we didn't even get to see these characters meet for the first time we got to hear the girl's thoughts on it after it happened and i was like like there was no payoff there was no payoff whatsoever and i was like i don't like this i don't like this and this is stupid and i am angry about it so i didn't like that at all that was my only two star of the month only book i really didn't like of the month so not happy with that one did not give me the vibes i wanted so i was like mm, i need a different one so then i found lavender moon this is like you have your omega she lives with her parents and she's like i need like something for myself like i need to be able to like afford an apartment on myself but omegas like no one really hires them because this whole world is messed up okay it is what it is <laughs> I, just, I wanted the nesting so she starts working essentially at a strip club and she, her stepbrother finds out and he's like absolutely not you're going to come and be like my omega for my pack and she's like but you already have an omega even though i have loved you forever stepbrother and he's like doesn't matter they all want you to so yeah that's a different like pack dynamic you've got two omegas and uh two alphas and yeah it's just like her trying to like find her place in the scenario it was very short as well i think also under 200 pages it was decent i gave it three stars i didn't really like love it i didn't necessarily feel the connection between a lot of the characters i think they were looking for something and she was just able to fill it not really it being having anything to do with her her. like I didn't really feel like they had any connection to her but if you're looking for a step-sibling <laughs> Omegaverse look no further 
and in that one she didn't make her own nest they made it for her and I was like this was not what I wanted this was actually the entire opposite of what I wanted I didn't even know that was a thing that you could do so I was I was disappointed in that so I was like okay I'm just gonna reread Omega's Obsession because like my favorite Omega verse I've ever read is the girl is like a little bit crazy and I knew that she made a nest that I enjoyed so I was like let's go with that one but essentially this one she's been in love with her be brother's best friend forever and she always thought like she'd be his Omega but then when she like came out as an Omega he like dropped off the face of the earth and she like barely sees him now but she's also like a little crazy and she stalks him all the time and like steals his stuff and she finds out that he's in a pack with another alpha and a beta and they're looking for an Omega and she's like literally me like look no further like what are you doing so she sets it up so that she like stumbles into their path and then the beta is also a little bit crazy <laughs> and starts stalking her and then she loves it because she's like oh my god this guy matches my energy because <laughs> they're both a little bit off <laughs> yeah and then she's got like a very traumatic father like this get, it gets kind of it gets a lot darker than the other omega verses on this list but uh she ends up having to move in with them and then she's like this is my world now i don't care if you want me here or not but you don't really know why the guy doesn't want her there because you know that he likes her too so then you have to find that throughout but essentially this gave me what i wanted okay gave me what i wanted okay it's a four star read for me because she just goes and she goes i want what i want and i'm gonna steal all of their stuff to make this nest i'm gonna steal this guy's squishmallow and this one's pillow and this blanket and i'm gonna set up this giant cushion and I'm gonna go to sleep and live my best life. And I love that for her, okay? I love that for her. It just, I like that she's a little bit, a little bit a lot. And B, I just, I knew I was gonna get like, I forgot about the Squishmallow. The Squishmallow was honestly such like an, a good positive addition, but I knew she was, I was, she was gonna get those like comfy, cozy, like this is perfect for me kind of vibes. So I got what I wanted in the end. But honestly, that feeling and that like want hasn't left me. Whether it is an Omegaverse or not, I don't care. But if you have a book that meets what I'm talking to and gives that level of like comfort, like I just want the, the, the character to be comfy. That's what I just want to read about a comfy character. Leave it in the comment down below, please, because I will check it out. I'm dying for them right now. I can't really find anything else to scratch that itch. So then on that kind of like darker side, we're going to go into the dark romance. I only read one of them this month, which was very surprising, but it was Butcher and Blackbird. This has been on the platforms for a couple of months as well. Very hard to find. Finally, my hold came up on the library of it. But this is like a serial killer romance. So they're both serial killers who kill other serial killers and then they meet because they went after the same serial killer. And then they're like, oh, hey, oh, hey. And then they're like, hmm, what if we had a competition every year to see like who could first kill like the same serial killer? So then yeah, the book takes place over like four years or something like that. And they have a competition every year where this guy who's not a part of their competition picks like a location where he knows there's a serial killer and then he just gives them the coordinates to go and they have to figure out like who's the serial killer and take them out. It sounds a lot more fun than it was. This was less of a dark romance. I mean it's a dark romance because it's serial killers but like it was more of like a rom-com kind of thing with some disturbing elements to it. Some things I feel like they just went a little bit in on that I didn't need to didn't need to read. But yeah, I really expected more out of this book. I still gave it a three stars. It was like a fun time. It was honestly just kind of like a letdown. Like they were cute, but they lacked any kind of tension. And I just felt like it went on for longer than it needed to. If this was a story that they wanted to tell, if they told it shorter, like honestly, maybe even a novella or like under 300 pages, it would have been better. Um, I just felt like the pacing was off and it kind of dragged. So that was a really disappointing one for me because I had it set to such a high standard, but overall like a three star is not bad reading. Okay, and then into the contemporary romances. So we already talked about two with book lovers and people we meet on vacation. The third one for the contemporary romance was Practice Makes Perfect. It is the second in the standalone series. When in Rome is the first one. So I read the second one. This is like small town, good girl meets adventurous bad boy kind of thing, tatted up. She owns a flower shop. Those are the vibes and then they like start fake dating and it's very much like a teach me how to kind of thing overall i wasn't i wasn't impressed 
I gave it three stars. It wasn't bad. It had its moments. I just felt like this one really dragged as well. And I also did not care about the characters. Either one. Could not have cared less about them. Like they had cute moments, but I could not have cared less about these two characters or their love story together or whether they ended up together or anything to do with that fact. I don't care. Don't care. Wasn't an awful book. Just wasn't really for me. Oh, I will say on this one though, it is a clean romance. So if you're looking for a clean romance, I don't read a lot of those on my channel. This is one of them. So that's an option out there as well. No spice. Another contemporary I picked up this month was You Deserve Each Other, someone I follow on Instagram. Uh, they either posted or they talked about it or they might have responded to my story with it. I can't remember how we started talking about it, but we both love the movie How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. It's like a 90s rom-com. So good. It's like my favorite rom-com ever. And she was talking about how this book she had just picked up really reminded her of that. So I was like, okay, hey, once you get to the end, tell me if it like stays all the way through and tell me if it's worth reading. So she got back to me a little bit later and she was like, hey, like it absolutely is. It does give a lot of those vibes, like not exactly the same, but that very much like hatred of going out of my way to make you dump me kind of vibe. And I was like, say less, let me pick it up. So that is what this is. These two characters, they're living together, they're engaged, they're, you know, their wedding's coming up. And the girl's like, wow, I really truly hate my life. Like I really truly have been a ghost for these last couple months and I hate my mother-in-law or like my mother-in-law to be and I don't want to marry this guy and I don't want to go through the wedding but if I back out now like they're going to charge me obscene amounts of money that I don't have for a wedding like I never wanted so I have to get him to break up with me. And then she realizes that he has been trying to get her to break up with him this whole time so that he doesn't have to face like his mother afterwards. This is very much a case of like an overstepping mother-in-law who just does not know boundaries and is like a little bit evil. So then they basically just go to like a relationship war <laughs> and they do a bunch of stuff to try to get the other to break up with them and to see like where the lines are. It does get like a little bit too much for me. Like, like I only rated the book three stars because a lot of the things like I think were like over the top and the idea was like, oh, like how much can love like withstand or like this was like a second chance within a romance kind of thing. A lot of them, I don't know if I could like <laughs> forgive you being that mean to me. <laughs> like, or like going out of your way to like treat me like this. Like, but I'm not a passive person, like in terms of like communication, like I'm very forthright. And I would rather you just come up to me and be like, we have this problem. Whereas all of these were like passive aggressive maneuvers to manipulate the other one into breaking up, which is the foundation of the thing. But I didn't love that. Some of it I was just like, I would just never trust you again. Like I just, I wouldn't believe what you're saying. But it was cute. It did have its moments. It was fun to read about. It was definitely like a different book. Like I haven't read a book like that before. So it was fun and I would recommend this one. And then finally, the 24th book on this list is Archer's Voice. This is another one. So I realized that I might have gotten a little ahead of myself thinking this video was ending just because it took a long time to film. I never actually explained what Archer's Voice is. So just kind of doing that now. Archer's voice follows this girl. She's had a very rough six months and she just kind of breaks one day and goes, I can't take it anymore. I can't be here anymore. So she pops in her car and goes on this sporadic trip and she ends up in this little like seaport summer tourist town. And she says, I'm just going to stay here until I can face my life back home. So she rents a place. She gets a job as a waitress and just tries to settle in. Meanwhile, she keeps having these run-ins with like the town recluse who's also like in his 20s So it's odd that he's so reclusive and the town really doesn't talk about him and they really treat him like he's weird But she keeps having these moments and this like connection with him and she wants to explore it further So she goes out of her way to befriend him and to really press to find out what is his story and what is going on and she finds out that he is mute and that kind of connects with her because she speaks sign language because her dad was deaf so then she's the first one he can ever really talk with and their love story kind of goes from there there's also a lot of subplots going on about manipulative people and a lot of drama and then also a lot of trauma and it's just a lot that i think i put on my tbr in like 2022 on the library it had it so i put my hold on it the hold came up i was so excited to read it i really enjoyed it for the first maybe like 30 percent and then wow did it tank after that it just dragged on and on and on and on and i did not care i did not care i don't even think that the relationship is that strong and i don't really like the two characters together and although like the story was interesting it there wasn't enough to it. I didn't love the ending. I don't love the couple. The girl kind of got on my nerves a lot. It also had this like weird subplot about 
like her traumatic backstory that like reared its head later on and I was like I don't what did not need this did not need this that was another big letdown I gave it three stars again not a terrible book but I think I hit like the 80% mark or the 90% mark and I was like for the love of god just end just be over it like I truly could not care about anything that happened after this point and I was so close to DNFing at like 90 or 80 percent and I was like no no get through it and I pushed my way through it and it wasn't worth it it wasn't worth it so yeah that was a big letdown that was a big downer this is another one that's like all over the book platforms I don't I don't really get the hype on this one but okay we have done it this is gonna suck to edit suck to edit this video is so long <laughs> this is why you shouldn't read 24 books a month because it messes it messes up your timing for your wrap up but anyways, it was a really good reading month overall. Over half the books I read were either four or five stars, which is insane to me because like three is a pass, four and five I love. Aside from procrastinating my entire life and digging myself into a really deep, possibly insurmountable hole, um, I really enjoyed my reading month this month. <laughs> and there's a lot on here I would recommend. And I had a blast. So let me know down in the comments below, how are you doing so far in your 2024 goals? And please, please give me recommendations for like, Com not like a comfort read but like a comfy character in a book where they have blankets and pillows and like comfort around them you know that is what I need in my life that is all I have for you guys today don't forget to leave a like comment and subscribe I post videos every Saturday and I'll be posting some shorts throughout the week so ring that bell for notifications and you won't miss anything and I'll catch you guys on the next one bye <laughs>